Hi everybody. Um, welcome back to my design team project for Country Craft Creations using um, Gingham Farm from my mind's eye. Um, all of the supplies are available at Country Craft Creations. And I just need to apologize up front that I recorded all of this stuff and then discovered that it hadn't recorded. So I'm going to be doing kind of a walkthrough to tell you what to do. And hopefully you'll understand what I'm doing. If not, um, just uh, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can do a demonstration video of whatever it is that's hard to understand. But let's start here. This is the inside cover. This is a large waterfall. Okay, and you're going, it's very straightforward, traditional waterfall. So you're going to need nine waterfall pieces. I'm reading off my sheet, so I'll make sure I give you the right measurements. Six and a quarter inches wide by four and three quarters tall. You need nine of those, okay? And then you need two, uh, one piece that is eight and a half by two. That's for this long belly band. And then you need one piece three and a half by two for the short belly band, okay? You want to score the nine belly band pieces uh, across, you know, place the four and three quarter inch edge along the top of your scoreboard, score at a half inch, so that along this long edge you have a score at half inch. Do that for all nine of your waterfall pieces. Score the two belly band pieces across one short edge at a half inch. All right. So, um, the other thing you want to do before you start putting the belly band down is um, the inside front cover um, look just like this, and you want to line it. And I used a piece six and a quarter by eight and a quarter to line um, this inside cover. Just center it on the cover. You know, just have a little border around. Okay, so that's all you need for this. Then what you want to do open this up. You want to take the these pieces which you've scored, folded, and burnished, and I do have here just a, a little scrap piece to demonstrate. Um, pretend that this is your black cardstock or whatever color cardstock you're using and that it has been folded over so you have a little tab, okay? Then I want you to take your short belly band piece and just hook it over the top okay in the center like that and you're going to want some glue here on the inside and just glue it right down and you'll have a tab here okay i don't have i don't have a scrap to show you but so that when you glue down this first piece this tab which of course is shorter will be glued down with it so hopefully that's clear all right so now you've got the first piece down and you've got your tab glued down with it as well you want to take the next piece and glue it right up against the edge of the tab. This is a very traditional waterfall, okay? Your base piece, that piece that covers the, the inside front cover, um, I used the edge of that to line up the edge of my waterfall just to help keep it straight, okay? I used score tape to put these down so that if they got crooked, I could pull them up and straighten them out. All right, so just repeat that with all nine pieces so that it rests right up against the edge of that piece, you know, that uh, tab. Okay, then you want to take this piece, the longer belly band, and just center it on the bottom edge of the book. Okay, now you're going to cut your mats. All your mats um, are, are, are not the same, but they're all cut from a single strip of six inch paper that you've cut from, you know, the edge of a 12 by 12. Just cut a strip, six inches by 12 inches. You want to cut a four inch piece off the top, and that's this, four by six, okay? Then you want to cut nine strips, three quarters of an inch wide. That's these, all right? And keep them in order so your pattern follows. When you get to the end, when after you've cut your nine, you're gonna have a piece just about this wide, and that'll be the piece you're gonna glue right to the base. All right, do all that. Now, on this piece, you're going to place a magnet about an inch in and 
from the bottom and side to side centered and then put a matching magnet on the inside of this piece okay and you can mat those just cut a piece that's um, a quarter inch smaller in each direction so far so good I hope so then I used this washi tape which is in part of the collection so you should be able to get this at country craft creations comes in a set we've used it in other projects that we've done um, in this series and i put a piece here and then i put pieces in each uh, to cover each one of these tabs and use um, use your glitter glue art glitter glue or whatever glue you have because the washi is not strong enough adhesive to last all right that's that Okay, now, this piece is just two flaps, and the two flaps, let me just measure, are four by eight and a half. You need two of them. You want to glue a piece or use some score tape to put a piece of seam binding centered just coming out from each side, like so, and then you're going to score at a half inch on the long side of each of these pieces and place it. This one is in about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a thirty second from the inside, and this one's right on the edge. Okay, so that's those two pieces, and then they get tied with the ribbon, or with the seam binding, I should say. Okay. Well, that was clumsy. There we go. Okay. Now, here, you know, you will have seen the walkthrough by now, so you'll know what to expect with this odd looking page. Let me show you this one first. You're going to have two side pocket inserts that are 11 by 8 and 3 eighths and you're going to score them at five and a half, fold them in half, round the corners if you want, and then just place it in here and put a magnet about halfway in the, right in the middle of the page and a matching magnet on your side pocket insert to hold it in place. You're gonna make two of those, one here, one for here, and then for each side you need a pocket and the pocket is six and seven eighths by four. Score it on two short sides, one long side. Trim out the corners and place them at the bottom. Okay, and I've got the same situation happening here. And then this piece, let me just close this, get this out of the way. All right, so this is a little more complicated. So what we did here is cut five pieces, five and a half by one and a half, one piece five by one and a half, and one piece six by one and a half. Okay, so this piece here is the six by one and a half, and this is the five by one and a half. And let me open our swatches. Okay, and they are just centered on the base of this um, side pocket insert on the front side with the fold to the left. And there is a magnet here and a magnet here, just like we just did for the front cover waterfall. Then these pieces, and also I've rounded all the corners, half inch. And these pieces are the five and a half by one and a half. You're gonna score one short edge at a half inch. And then you're going to Place the first one a little over an eighth of an inch from the top, and then just eyeball them with about an eighth inch between going down the page. Okay, and these are intended to hold um, fabric swatches or um, paint swatches, um, you know, whatever, whatever swatches you think you're gonna need for your project, okay? And I just noticed I didn't get that one on very straight. Um, and then the belly band holds them in place as will some extra weight when they get matted. And then it goes in here like that, okay? 
and it gets held. Hang on, let me just get it in there, and it gets held by the magnet. And you can do the same on this side if you want that many swatches. All right, and then our notebook is going to go here, which we haven't done yet, and then I haven't decided exactly what I want to put here yet. So, we missed all of that. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm going to pick out some mats, and then we're going to get all this matted. Okay, and I will be back in a few moments. All right, so I have cut a lot of the mats so that we can get these down. And let me pull these out. And I realized when I was cutting them that I told you to cut this eight and I think one quarter tall. It should be eight and three quarters tall, okay? That mat that goes behind there. Okay, so these are eight and one quarter by three and a quarter, and you need four of them. And you'll see what I'm doing. want to get something light colored behind there so I can see. Well, I didn't get it on very straight. Okay. Side of this, I'm just using the um, linen colored artisan cardstock. I want to leave a lot of room for um, writing and pictures and sketches and idea boards and whatever else you might need in a book like this. is five and three quarters by eight and one quarter. If you're using this book for something else, this would be a good place for a big photo. Um, like a five by seven or something. Um, I was thinking it'd be a good place for either a picture of the finished project or your um, mood board or idea board or you know whatever whatever you need. one, the black one with the roses to go here. Which way do I want that to go? No, I like it the way I had it. There we go. 
go. And let's try these. Good, could have tied that a little tighter, but that's all right. And I've pulled out the side pocket inserts for now while I get these pieces down. So for each pocket, you need a piece five and a half by three and a quarter. And then for the lining piece, the larger piece, it needs to be five and a half by six and a half. In the interest of saving paper, I cut mine six, which should be fine. If you have plenty of paper and you want to cut them six and a half, that would probably be better. large mat because I thought this might be a good place for either you could either put some of the linen photo mats on top or just one large photo here and one large linen photo mat um, which I may add I kind of want to leave it until we you know I feel like it's sort of wait and see what's needed there and it is eight and a quarter excuse me, by five and three quarters. large mat. Okay, now, let's see, I'm just getting a fresh, um, this is a baby wipe, it's a dry one that I had taken out. Okay. Now, it's really pretty. I just really kind of want to tie that again since it's loose. Let's see if I can get that a little tighter. So we have our waterfall, we have our flaps, we have our two pockets, we have a place for a big page. Our notebook is going to go here. So before we do that and our covers, let's pull our side pocket inserts in. I haven't cut, I still have some belly band pieces I need to cut mats. Um, all right, so that's that one. Let's start with this one. And I'm going to put the cream on the inside like that. I'm going to put this plaid on the back and I'm going to put this uh, floral on the front. So let's get our corner chopper. Wait a minute, hang on. I want to make sure I have this facing correctly. That goes like that. Boy, I almost had it wrong. This is the front. That's going to go there. This one's going to go here. Like that. Okay. And then these two are going to go on the inside. And there. 
Okay, might as well go ahead and start with these. put this one in. All right, so this one goes here. Just like that. That looks great. Okay. And remember, you just make two of these if you don't want to do the um, swatch one. Okay, I haven't cut the mats for this yet, but that's I have got the others. All right, so these need to have their corners rounded. Right, now I am only matting the outside of these um, because you might want to, now you could mat eat both sides if you prefer, but you might want to put your swatch, you know, whatever swatch you're going to put on here, you might want to see it on dark and light. So you could put it you know, on both sides. All right, so there's that. And I still have to pick out mats for this belly band. But you you can see it lays down nicely now. Okay, so let's open these. Now, I chose this stripe for here because I thought you could write on it. But if you don't think you're going to want to write on it, pick something else. thinking as I look at these because I still want to leave some of it black so that you can put your swatches on black I may put like a half mat in the um, linen color there okay so there's that there's that and then I've got the same these two pieces and then um, the plaid on the back okay for this belly band and we need to do let me bring this back over and let's put this in okay all right so we need to cut the pieces for this belly band we need to cut the inside mats for this belly band and we need to uh, insert the notebook in the back and then of course we have the covers okay so let me go ahead and cut out the mats that we need and the pieces that we need for this and for the rest and I'll be back um, so I've gone ahead and matted the inside of this belly band 
and the mat's going to be the same size as the ones you cut for the front. And then I matted this belly band with the same paper I used here. And then I used the text on the inside. And I feel like I need a little more glue right there. Hang on. Then here I put a piece of the linen on top of that text. Um, I just felt like it needed it. All right, so now in order to put in our notebook, now these measurements are gonna be completely dependent on the size of the notebook. I will post a link to the notebook that I'm using. It was very inexpensive. Um, oh, you know what? I don't think I can put, did I? Where did I get this notebook? Let me think. I might have gotten this at Walmart. I did get it at Walmart. Um, but I'm sure, you know, if you don't have a Walmart or you don't shop at Walmart, you can find something similar. But this one came from Walmart. And what you need is a belly band. Now, let me clarify. My book is very nearly as wide as my back cover, right? So I'm gonna put my belly band down first and then I'm gonna mat. If your belly band is gonna be much smaller because you have a much smaller notebook, then mat this back, place your belly band, and then you may need to put a secondary mat to cover these little tabs. Um, that's pretty much personal choice. And then you need to decide where on the back to place your belly band. And the place that you need to put it is in such a way, let me just slide this in here. Okay, so depending on the size of your book and how far up this belly band is gonna go, you wanna determine how far up in your book, you know, where your notebook is gonna end up in your book. Now, I want my notebook to be very high. Um, I actually want the spiral of this notebook to be above the book, okay? Because I want, when it's being used, I want to be able to do that, to flip the pages over, okay? So I'm going to place my belly band, and I'll post a link to something similar to this. Um, like I said, I got it at Walmart. Um, I'm gonna place this just about an eighth of an inch down from the top, okay? And the width of it is one quarter of an inch wider than the width of your book. And I made it two inches high by one quarter inch wider than my notebook. feel like I have just been, I don't know, um, a word that we use in my family, discombobulated. The whole time I've been making this book, I've made mistakes, I've done kind of like, what was I thinking stuff? You know, mostly I caught them, I think I caught them all and told you about them, so you don't do these things. Um, I have no idea why. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. All right, now I need a mat. And that mat is going to be, whoop. I'm going to mat it, even though most of it's going to be hidden under here, I'm going to mat the mat it fully because it's going to show. So eight and three quarters by six and a quarter. Eight and three quarters by six and a quarter. I'm just going to cut that. There's these birds. And then, that looks nice. And then I need something for my belly band. So that's gonna be one and three quarters by six. All right. I'm gonna use that. Okay. Put that one in first.
I did not want to go in. this thinner bone folder and slide it under there partly to make sure I didn't glue it down but partly to just loosen this belly band a little bit make it easier to get that notebook in sorry I realized once again I did not have my mic on hopefully you could hear me if not I will do a um, a uh, voiceover okay so now this I'm going to slide in there. I almost feel like I want to decorate that, but it's going to be hidden anyway. Okay. So now, let's see. Okay, so that does just what I wanted it to. It folds all the way back. And do we want to decorate that? I feel like we should put something Maybe we'll just put some ephemera there. I don't really want to waste a whole piece of paper on it, although we don't have that much left to go. We'll see. After we do the cover, let's see what we have left. Now this does hit on that notebook, so it doesn't open quite as flat as it did previously, but it's flat enough. And Okay, so now here I need to decide on the closure. And let me show you. This is a book that I use all the time, and I used my usual ribbon closure, but I put it under the mat, and I don't know if you can see, it's sort of torn the mat a little bit. So I don't want to do that on this book. Um, it does need a closure, though. I wonder if... I think I will do a tie closure that attaches here on the spine and just you know comes around and ties on the front on the side or the front one or the other i think that would be the best all right well we have done quite a lot so i think i'm at a good stopping point um, and again i apologize for being uh, a little out of whack with this one but um, I think I've given you enough information to make it. I hope I have. And if I haven't, please um, comment down below and I will help you out as much as I can. Um, I am going to pick out what we're going to do for the cover. And next time we'll finish up this book, we'll um, uh, mat the cover, add some embellishments, and we'll be done. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your patience. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, please do so. I promise most of my other tutorials are a lot more put together than this one. And um, I guess that's it. Thanks again for watching. You can get all the supplies at Country Craft Creations, which I will link down below. Bye-bye.